friends, Kim from Stamping and Perfection. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am playing with the new Hedgehog Hollow subscription box. This is the September box, and once again, it's packed full of goodies. So um, here is the six by eight inch stamp set. This is called You Bake Me Happy. You can see that it's got layered donut bits. It's got a couple of gorgeous cupcakes with all kinds of layers of things you can put on top of those. And it's got a couple of uh, cupcake picks with little sentiments that actually fit inside. So this actually covers you for quite a thing, quite a few things besides congrats, happy birthday with love, and you make me happy. So I, I think this is adorable. Then it came with the 4x6 stamp set with all the sentiments in it. And these are really cute sentiments. These are called Sweet Sentiments. Chocolate, chocolate is the answer. Who cares what the question is? Life happens. Chocolate helps. Love that. The, they're all fun sentiments. Then there are three stencils. This one is a little um, ice cream cone set. And you can see, if I pull this out, you can see it layered together. The bottom one is the cones, and it's got the pointed cones and the regular cones, and the top one is the scoops of ice cream, and when you line them up, you get the scoops of ice cream, which is really fun. The ice cream cone filled with ice cream. Then there's this fabulous slimline stencil, and this is three layers. So these, this you can use this as a spotlight stencil if you just want to have a slimline spotlight type feel to your card. You could use just this one. Then you've got the two different layers for the um, little like holiday mints. So that one's going to be fun to play with. And then there's this donut stencil. And again, the base piece is a great spotlight stencil. Then you get all the other pieces. Look at this little hole. Wouldn't this make a perfect moon mask on a nighttime sky card? Then you get the circle mask and the donut. And then you've got all these, um, all these bits you can fit on top of the donut there for frosting. You've got that one. You've got sprinkles. You've got this one. You've got uh, this one. Super cute. And this, how pretty is this? Like you can make all kinds of different things and then the mask version of that. So it comes chocked full and then I got envelopes and I believe these are the subscriber bonus. These really beautiful metallic envelopes. Can you see that? They really are shiny. As cute as those cupcakes and donuts look, I really want to play with that peppermint stencil set. Like I love layered stencils and I'm excited about this one. Like first of all, that that gives me a slimline spotlight stencil that I can use to create pretty backgrounds and then put my images on top. So I like this really can be used for things other than just this particular stencil. And I love this shape because as soon as I look at this I think beach ball so I can use this to create create beach balls on a card um, for the summer or you know something like that but I want to create those peppermints because that I'm pretty sure that's what this is intended for since the whole theme is sweets so I'm using this telephone box red ink this is my favorite red ink it's such a pretty color and I'm putting a light coat of uh, this red ink here and here's one tip I have for you if you want to make your images for stenciled stenciling look dimensional just add a little extra color on part of the stencil so I'm going through and I'm adding a little extra color on the outside edges of these pinwheel parts so I'm just putting it on the outside edge I'm just adding making it darker on the outside edge of each one of those fan pieces and I'm leaving the center lighter and you'll see what a difference this makes like it just makes a huge difference 
Also notice that when I use my washi tape, I put my washi tape just at the top, so that allows my stencil to behave like a hinge. So if I want to open it up and peek at it, I can just lift it up. And I got in the habit of doing that when I started using a lot more mixed media, like paste and things. It helps me keep from making a mess of my paste. So now when I take this off, and I'm just lifting this up because I'm going to put this back down, this looks great, but the white of the mints blends in with the white of the background. So here's tip number two for making your stenciled images look dimensional. I'm going to put the third stencil on top. That behaves like a mask over what I just colored in. And now I'm adding this fog ink. This is Color Hive fog ink from Maker Forte. And I'm just putting that on the outside edges of the white bits. If you want something to look white and stand out from your background and look a little bit dimensional, then you need to give it some color. You can't just leave it white. You actually have to put some color in. And if you use light gray, you could use a very light blue or a very light lavender. Those always work really well too. But take a look when I lift this up and you can see the difference. I did the two on the left with the light fog ink and look at the difference. They look like they pop off the page. They look like they're three-dimensional. That little bit of light gray ink makes a huge difference. That right one just looked like a flat pinwheel on the background. So I am going to go ahead and add that fog ink just to the outside edges. I'm not doing the whole white piece. I want it to still look white, but I need to put just enough color at the ends there to make it separate from that white background and it makes those mints look like they're three-dimensional. It amaz it's amazing to me that a little bit of gray ink can do that. Now I also did some experimenting because I wanted to see how that kaleidoscope powder would work. I have this red kaleidoscope powder. I did the same thing with the gray inks but I had just re-inked my clear ink pad, my embossing ink, and it did squish through the bottom of the stencil. So my technique is a little messy, but that kaleidoscope powder worked great. And uh, if you like to experiment with different mediums, like this is a wonderful medium to use with stencils. You just have to put your clear embossing ink down first. And I kind of just squish the ink pad into there. I need some new foams. Um, and putting it on, I think, with a foam blender or a brush blender might have worked better. So that works really well. And imagine using a pretty paste. You can color your, your clear and white paste with that kaleidoscope powder too, by the way. And you can also mix it with water and it makes a great um, watercolor medium. So I cut my card base at seven and a half by um, eight and a half. And this piece was originally three and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch off each of the ends. So this should now be three and a half by eight. And um, I'm going to actually back this with a piece of green. I was really wishing I had some um, cardstock in the Everglades green color because that is my favorite green ink. Um, but I don't, so I'm going to use this one, and I'm not sure what color this is because this was just a piece in my stash. I, do, I really have had trouble finding deep dark greens, and the Everglade ink would make beautiful uh, cardstock. So um, I have to get some of that if they have it. So I like to actually glue my panel down on my cardstock because my trimmer has a little wire. This is a Fiskars trimmer and it's got a little wire in there and I've gotten pretty good at knowing where to cut relative to the wire and the edge of the paper um, to get it peaking about the same amount all around. So I like to add my layers with some liquid glue. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to keep this card really clean and simple. I could add paint splatters. Um, I could take out that splatter stamp I have from Maker Forte and add some 
more controlled splatters, but all I really want to do is add a simple sentiment and some crown jewel gems. Now, to do this, I, I'm using a sentiment in the kit because I wanted to stick with the kit, although I think a Christmas sentiment would be fabulous on this. And I'm just using the one sweet because it fit perfectly on my card and I didn't have to overlap any of the mints. I've got two different greens here, that gorgeous, I think that's Everglades green. And I think this one, this one is uh, Celtic green. So I'm gonna add three, cause I either add three or five. I'm just gonna add three here. I really wanna keep this looking clean and simple. So I'm using my on the hook tweezers from Maker Forte. Love these tweezers. And, um, these are the best ones for putting tiny embellishments and stuff down on your cards. And then I'll use that wonderful jewel picker tool. Love this tool. And add it with some liquid glue. Now I did take that kaleidoscope powder panel and I die cut out the, um, I used a circle the exact size of these mints and I die cut those out. I'm going to share that card in just a minute. And you can see the gray, like you know it's there, so you can tell. But somebody who doesn't know it, there, it's there is, you know, it, they still look like red and white mints. It doesn't take away from that, but it makes them pop off that page. And it makes them look like they're curved little mints, which I love. So um, this kaleidoscope powder one, I'm going to die cut because that's too messy. I don't love that. I don't have any way to fix that really. Um, so I'm going to die cut those out and use them on a card. Now I'll put links to everything below here and um, I will include a link to the fall uh, Hedgehog Hollow virtual event where you get a good box of goodies and lots of virtual classes for the weekend. And this is the second card I made. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and have a wonderful day friends. Thank you for watching.